It is better to offer no excuse than a bad one. It is better to be alone than in bad company. If freedom of speech is taken away, then dumb and silent we may be led, like sheep to the slaughter. My mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All I am I owe to my mother. I attribute my success in life to the moral, intellectual and physical education I received from her. A primary object should be the education of our youth in the science of government. In a republic, what species of knowledge can be equally important, and what do you more pressing than communicating it to those who are to be the future guardians of the liberties of the country? Be courteous to all, but intimate with few, and let those few be well tried before you give them your confidence. True friendship is a plant of slow growth, and must undergo and withstand the shocks of adversity before it is entitled to appellation. But lest some unlucky event should happen unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I this day declare with the utmost sincerity. I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. A free people ought not only to be armed, but disciplined, to which end a uniform and well-digested plan is requisite, and their safety and interest require that they should promote such manufactories as tend to render them independent of others for, essential, particularly military, supplies. In politics as in philosophy, my tenets are few and simple. The leading one of which, and indeed that which embraces most others, is to be honest and just ourselves and to exact it from others, meddling as little as possible in their affairs where our own are not involved. If this maxim was generally adopted, wars would cease and our swords would soon be converted into reap hooks and our harvests be more peaceful, abundant, and happy. We sainted Saint Tammany, King Timonin the Third, because he embodied moral perfection and every divine qualification that a deity could possess. I hold him in higher esteem than the saints of the Roman Catholic Church. He'll forever be the patron saint of America. Human happiness and moral duty are inseparably connected. However, political parties, may now and then answer popular ends, they are likely in the course of time and things, to become potent engines, by which cunning, ambitious, and unprincipled men will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government, destroying afterwards the very engines which have lifted them to unjust dominion. 99% of failures come from people who make excuses. I hope I shall possess firmness and virtue enough to maintain what I consider the most enviable of all titles, the character of an honest man. There is nothing which can better deserve our patronage than the promotion of science and literature. Knowledge is in every country the surest basis of public happiness. Guard against the impostures of pretended patriotism. Labor to keep alive in your breast that little spark of celestial fire called conscience. Perseverance and spirit have done wonders in all ages. Associate yourself with men of good quality, if you esteem your own reputation, for tis better to be alone than in bad company. Let us therefore animate and encourage each other, and show the whole world that a freeman, contending for liberty on his own ground, is superior to any slavish mercenary on earth. A sensible woman can never be happy with a fool. Few men have virtue to withstand the highest bidder. Happiness depends more upon the internal frame of a person's own mind, than on the externals in the world. Experience teaches us that it is much easier to prevent an enemy from posting themselves than it is to dislodge them after they have got possession. The harder the conflict, the greater the triumph. Worry is the interest paid by those who borrow trouble. 
The turning points of lives are not the great moments. The real crises are often concealed in occurrences so trivial in appearance that they pass unobserved. As mankind becomes more liberal, they will be more apt to allow that all those who conduct themselves as worthy members of the community are equally entitled to the protections of civil government. I hope ever to see America among the foremost nations of justice and liberality. If we desire to avoid insult, we must be able to repel it, if we desire to secure peace, one of the most powerful instruments of our rising prosperity, it must be known that we are at all times ready for war. To encourage literature and the arts is a duty which every good citizen owes to his country. I conceive a knowledge of books is the basis upon which other knowledge is to be built. Paper money has had the effect in your state that it will ever have, to ruin commerce, oppress the honest, and open the door to every species of fraud and injustice. We must consult our means rather than our wishes. Real men despise battle, but will never run from it. Real men despise battle, but will never run from it. Citizens by birth or choice of a common country, that country has a right to concentrate your affections. The name of American, which belongs to you, in your national capacity, must always exalt the just pride of patriotism more than any appellation derived from local discriminations. To persevere in one's duty, and be silent is the best answer to calumny. Discipline is the soul of an army. It makes small numbers formidable, procures success to the weak, and esteem to all. Let your heart feel for the afflictions and distress of everyone. We should not look back unless it is to derive useful lessons from past errors, and for the purpose of profiting by dearly bought experience. There is nothing so likely to produce peace as to be well prepared to meet the enemy. To enlarge the sphere of social happiness is worthy of the benevolent design of a Masonic institution, and it is most fervently to be wished that the conduct of every member of the fraternity, as well as those publications, that discover the principles which actuate them, may tend to convince mankind that the grand object of masonry is to promote the happiness of the human race. Be not glad at the misfortune of another, though he may be your enemy. The great rule of conduct for us, in regard to foreign nations, is, in extending our commercial relations, to have with them as little political connection as possible. Promote, then, as an object of primary importance, institutions for the general diffusion of knowledge. In proportion as the structure of a government gives force to public opinion, it is essential that public opinion should be enlightened. No punishment, in my opinion, is too great, for the man who can build his greatness upon his country's ruin. I hold the maxim no less applicable to public than to private affairs, that honesty is always the best policy. If to please the people, we offer what we ourselves disapprove, how can we afterwards defend our work? Let us raise a standard to which the wise and honest can repair. The rest is in the hands of God. Overgrown military establishments, which, under any form of government, are inauspicious to liberty, and which are to be regarded as particularly hostile to republican liberty. Nothing is more essential, than that permanent, inveterate antipathies against particular nations, and passionate attachments for others, should be excluded, and that, in place of them, just and amicable feelings towards all should be cultivated. It is substantially true, that virtue or morality is a necessary spring of popular government. The rule, indeed, extends with more or less force to every species of free government. Gentlemen, you will permit me to put on my spectacles, for, I have grown not only grey, 
but almost blind in the service of my country. Anything will give up its secrets if you love it enough. Not only have I found that when I talk to the little flower or to the little peanut they will give up their secrets, but I have found that when I silently commune with people they give up their secrets also, if you love them enough. Strive not with your superiors in argument, but always submit your judgment to others with modesty. It is absolutely necessary for me to have persons that can think for me, as well as execute orders. A bad war is fought with a good mind. Decision making, like coffee, needs a cooling process. I'll die on my feet before I'll live on my knees. A slender acquaintance with the world must convince every man that actions, not words, are the true criterion of the attachment of friends.